And hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Sasquatch Secrets. I'm your host, Nikki Cologne, and I'm so happy you could all be here tonight. Let me see what we got. Oh, okay. Yeah, the chat's starting to uh, move up there. We got about 21 people in the house so far. That's great. Good to see y'all. Hope y'all had a great weekend. Good Sunday. It was, uh, it was nice here. It was blue skies, but a little bit chilly today. It was uh, colder than I expected. And uh, I wanted to get up and take a drive up north, but it was still some snow up there. <laughs> it was in the 30s, so uh, I didn't... Uh, no, nah, I'll wait. I'll wait another couple of weeks, maybe. Uh, I have another idea for a location I want to go... Uh, test some of my new gear. Um, it's a slot canyon. It's a kind of a popular area, I think. I, I don't know if, if it's real popular. We'll have to see if I take a drive up there next Saturday and uh, see what kind of shots I can get out there. Um, if I could go live, that would be really nice to be able to take you guys on that journey with me. So uh, we'll see how the weather holds up. Um, and maybe we can do that. But let's uh, take a look at the chat. See who we've got in the house tonight. And we have got Uncle Bones was the first in the house tonight. Hey, how you doing? I was supposed, I asked Uncle Bones to go to the movies with me, but he, he can't. And then that night I wasn't feeling well. That was Thursday night. So I ended up not going to the movies. I wanted to go see the Sasquatch sunset, but I'll have to wait till this coming week to go and uh, check it out. I wanted to be able to give you guys a review of that, but it'll have to wait. They're only showing it one night a week. So I have to wait till Thursday. So I have to put my alarm on too. So I don't forget because it's easy for me to do that these days. I just um, forget about that stuff. But um, thank you. B, B's in the house. Oh, B, did you upgrade? She wants all, <laughs> she wants all the messages. She wants all the spilling the tea, huh? You want it all. Well, that's okay. B and I had a very wonderful, long conversation the other day, and it was great to sit and talk with her face to face. And um, thank you for all your encouragement. I really appreciate that, B. Sharon. Hey, Sharon. Good to see you. Sasquatch Wizard. Um, that's Jonathan. Good to see you in the house. Thanks for being here. Henry May. There's Henry and Brian and Chewy. Looks like he is on the road coming back from PA. We look forward to anything you put out about that. And Jojo, hey, good to see you. Good to see you. What time? At five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Is it one o'clock over there? What time is it? I'm, I'm guessing one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I don't know exactly where you're at. I'm guessing. So let's see, who else have we got? Robert, good to see you, Robert. Oh, there's Brent. Nice to see you, stranger, stranger. He didn't contact me all week. I'm, I'm hurt. Okay, Um, who else do we have? I think, oh, there's Ristol. Good to see you, good to see you. Thanks for coming in. And Kevin Harder. Oh, we got to figure out. I got to figure out a show to do with Kevin to bring Kevin back on. Uh, Sandra. Hey, there's Sandra. Oh, shit. You're back in the hospital. Pneumonia. We're going to have to put you in a, in a bubble. Sandra bubble. We'll have to make a Sandra bubble for you. So that you're not falling or getting sick. Oh my goodness. Well, you you know that we all think uh, very highly of you, Sandra, and all the best wishes for a quick 
recovery again. Okay. But we are, I think we need to do a fundraiser for her, get her a bubble. <laughs> Um, Papa C. Hey, good to see you. Timmy boy. Long time. No see. There's angel Nolan. So John, there's John Ayers. My red, what is he saying? My red neck is showing again. Nikki watching WrestleMania. <laughs> as long as my volume's on and that one's off, it's okay. You can put it on. <laughs> hey, Jay. There's Jay Fritz. The Shake King. The Shake King of Florida. Good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Um, did I get everybody? Did I get it? I think I may have. Uh, oh, there's my buddy. There's Slackmate. Good to see you. Haven't talked to you either. Been, you've been ignoring me, haven't you? No. <laughs> he actually gave me a really good idea about tonight. So uh, you can, can all thank Slackmate for tonight's show. And uh, hey, there's Scott from Squatch America. Or it... Oh, hold on. This kind of messed up. There we go. Um, what was I saying? Squatch America, good to see you. Thanks for being here. And the whole chat, like, lip flop. So good, good. Uh, glad you're all here. So I did not put out any requests for any guests tonight because I worked on the show on uh, Wednesday, two, no, Wednesday, Thursday, I worked on the show. And, and then I... I just, you know, so much BS going around that I took Friday, Saturday. I did not even touch my computer. I didn't get on or as far as I know, I didn't get on or anything. I used my phone and stuff. But as far as working on the shows, and I didn't. I didn't contact anybody. So I just put open mic. If there's somebody out there that would like to join in the conversation tonight, just uh, hit me up on Messenger and I'll shoot you a link and you can come on. Other than that, I'll just be talking all myself and you guys will have to suck it up. <laughs> but we'll go through uh, some of the information I found for tonight. And we're going to be talking about the solar eclipse that's happening tomorrow. I hope you're all ready. You have your water. Do you have food? You have Because <laughs> people are going crazy. They are going crazy all over. Uh, a lot of misinformation. Okay. There's a lot of misinformation out there and people are trying to stir up a lot of, uh, garbage actually, you know, um, don't believe everything you see on social media and, um, Hey, there's the Buckwas crew, Jerry in and out, in and out. Okay. I'll take it. Whatever you can get, get in and out. Oh, that did not sound right. <laughs> Oh, Jerry. Okay. Good to see you. Um, John said, I heard it may get dark. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> There's not too much uh, stuff going on here in El Paso in that sense where people are panicking. You know, people put stuff out. And um, <laughs> Scott. <laughs> Oh my God, that people are putting stuff out like that and it's causing a lot of, uh, chaos, chaos in a lot of areas. So, um, I'm on Chris. Good to see you. Good to see you. Um, what did you, what did you say? Look, the eclipse in the eye to assert dominance over this, <laughs> please. We're going to go over safety, okay, <laughs> about about just that. So please don't do that. Do not do that. Um, yeah, so we're going to we're going to go through some of that and um, let's see what we got. So I'm going to put this like this today. And if I'm too big, I look too big. I look too big. I can make it smaller. <laughs> and anyway, let's 
kind of reminds me of Lockbeard's thing, right? Is that what he does? That's what he does. Uh, so the solar eclipse. And we'll be running through, for those who don't know, okay, uh, what happens is tomorrow we're expecting a, a solar eclipse. Uh, depending on where you are, anywhere starting from 10, 10 or 11, 10 to 2 or 11 to 2. Uh, well, it's just going to depend where you're at. You're going to have to look up your own information on your area. And uh, for me, we're going to start around 11 a.m. and it's going to be over by 144. Okay. With the actual totality happening at around 1225 p.m. and lasting a whole four minutes and 28 seconds, people are freaking out about. So it's not a three-day cosmic event where we're going to be thrown into the depths of hell and darkness for three days because that's going around, you know, that's going around. No, it's, it's not that. This is an event, and it is a very special event because it's not going to happen for another 350 years, supposedly. So a lot of things are going to be happening uh, centered around this event in the way of science. And we are going to uh, go through some of the stuff I found. And hopefully you guys find it as interesting as I did. <clears throat> so uh, this is just kind of a glimpse of what some people have seen. This is an older solar eclipse um, that was uh, captured. And let me see. I don't know where to put my papers here. So for those who don't know how a solar eclipse actually happens, um, it's all about where the earth is in regards to the moon and the sun. Okay. So you have a solar eclipse where the moon is exactly in line in between the sun and the earth and a lunar eclipse where it's the opposite. The earth is in the middle uh, covering the sun on the opposite side. So it, that's it. Okay. That, that's, that's it. <laughs> so it, there's also an annular and there's some other different variations, okay, that aren't quite perfect, but this one is going to be perfect um, in regards to the eclipse. And I am going to try to keep a closer eye on chat tonight. So if you hear me stop and look over, it's because I'm looking at one of my chats. <laughs> And let's see. But of course, I have to have questions, questions for the show, something that we can uh, look for to answer at some point. And that was, how will a solar eclipse impact animals? And is there any kind of research that is done on that? And there is, there is research. But it's very little because they don't happen that often. But uh, I'm going to tell you about some things that are going on. And they're really cool. Cool uh, scientific research going on right now. But specifically about Bigfoot. What does Squatch do during an eclipse? And this is all speculation. And just for fun, you know, what are going to be things that could happen okay we say they're really similar to humans okay and what do we do half of us freak out and panic and half or totally uh not panicked you know are just chill and know that this is something that it's not going to stop in the middle of an eclipse okay <laughs> We're still rotating and moving around the sun, so it's not going to just stop and throw us into darkness for sure. But hey, Enzo, you want to come on, Enzo? <laughs> You're welcome to come on. Uh, I don't have any guests scheduled for tonight, and it's just me talking about the eclipse and Sasquatch. So if you uh, would like a 
uh, link, just let me know. I am not throwing any links into the chat. I'm, I refuse to do that. <laughs> so I won't be doing that anymore. But again, if anybody wants to pop in and join in the discussion I'm going to be having, just, uh, oh, that show. He said show. Oh, that's not the right button, though, to do that, is it? So let me shoot him over a quick. Quick. Well, I guess I should spell your name right. What is happening? It's not letting me. Did you block me, Enzo? <laughs> no, there you are. Why was that? That was weird. Messenger upgraded? What the heck? Okay. I don't know. There's a link if you want to join. <clears throat> um, okay. So let's see. So what does Squatch do? But let's move on to a little bit more about safety. Because I wanted to get that clear. Please don't look at this eclipse tomorrow. <laughs> Please don't. Just just don't. You know, if you have the cute little glasses, go get the glasses. They're free. Most places, uh, you can go to your public library and pick up a pair of glasses. Okay. I know all the public libraries. Backtrack. Not all of them. There are specific uh, public libraries here in town that are giving them away. I think it's like no more than four glasses. Of, I don't know. Cause they said there was limiting per family. So you can go and pick up some glasses. They're very specific glasses. ISO one, two, three, one, two dash two, uh, glasses, your sunglasses, do not do that, okay? Don't think that, oh, I've got some really dark shades and this is going to, no. They don't have the proper filters on them, okay? So do not think you can throw your, your Ray-Bans on and they're going to protect your eyes. That picture right there is damaged to a retina after only looking at a solar eclipse for six seconds. Six seconds. Okay, so uh, be safe out there and do it the right way. I remember we all did probably back in, in grade school. You had the little pinhole and you projected the image onto a piece of paper. Do you remember that? You can do that. That still works. That is still accurate uh, way to look. Uh, Squatch men have sex because it's going to last four minutes and 28 seconds, and that's twice as long as most men. <laughs> oh, Jay. Jay, Jay. Um, yeah, I agree, Sharon. That was too much information for you. <laughs> uh, um, the public libraries, Timmy boy, go to your local library. If, uh, the big one, whatever the big one is in your area, because I know there's a couple of smaller. They're saying the bigger ones. But you can actually go to Google and just say El Paso. Uh, what, what did I type in there? Safety Eclipse Safety Glasses in El Paso or something. I did that. And it actually came up with a list of libraries. But you're kind of late. You know, it's already going to be tomorrow. So they, it was only till they ran out. So you might be SOL. They're saying that maybe some of the larger chains were selling some, but to be careful because they found out a lot of those glasses are fraudulent and they don't work properly. So you could run the risk if you buy the cheap 
cheapos. Do not buy them on Timu. <laughs> I, I don't think you you're gonna get you're gonna go blind. You're gonna go blind. Don't don't do that. Um, or just make sure they have that ISO marking on them, okay? <laughs> Before you uh, invest in buying some, which is probably too late by now. But you know, just don't watch it all. Watch it because you know there's gonna be a million a million photos and videos that are going to come out immediately after it. So I'm not, I'm not going to even <laughs> attempt to do it. Alrighty. So, um, so there's your safety briefing. Okay. Your safety briefing is complete. Do not look up at the sun. Uh, this is the track that the eclipse is going to be taking right through Texas and all the way up uh, through New England. I'm dealing with a 55-gallon fish tank situation. Uh-oh. that's a, I had that size tank, too, at one time. I won't do that again. <laughs> Although I loved fish. I loved having a tank. Anyway, um... Enzo's in the back room. No, he's not. Uh, there's nobody in my back room. Now there is. <laughs> Hold on. There he comes. Oops. Hold on. Wrong one. <laughs> Let's do this one. Is that better? Hello. Um, how are you, stranger Very danger? Well. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people are really wound up about this eclipse. <laughs> I know they are, and I don't want people to be that way. Just uh, it it happens. It's a natural occurrence, and it's such a small period of time. But people start rumors that just get carried away. You know, they get carried yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. We, we have a total solar eclipse at least two times a year, sometimes more, somewhere mm -hmm. around the planet. We're still here. Uh, right. What else? Uh, CERN will be firing off stuff uh, during the eclipse. Actually, they've been yeah. fired up since March. So, again, <laughs> right. we're still here. <laughs> NASA's going to be launching rockets. During the yeah, yeah, we know. Uh, they do that actually during every eclipse. Uh <laughs> yeah. So they yeah. just did it. These are all ago. things that have normally still, happened. Yeah. Uh I did hear that this was a kind of a special one that wasn't going to happen again. The alignment or something is so perfect that it wouldn't wouldn't happen again for over 350 years. Uh, I don't know how true that one is. Because I know we have the eclipses, but something about this one was particularly they were looking at. Um, I wish I had, I don't. It might be right here. Actually, I might get to it. Um, the article well, I was reading. For, for the United States, for North America, uh, this will be the last total eclipse for 20 years. And then in 20 years, that one actually just skirts the very northern part of the U.S., uh, like the western part of uh, North Dakota and upper part of Montana, and then scoots off across uh, Canada for the rest of it. But in 21 years, there will be one similar to this. It'll, the, the, I think the path is going the opposite direction, but it'll cross the whole of the U.S. So you have to yeah. stay healthy enough to be around for 21 more years if you want to, if you're going to miss this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know um, you're probably excited about this. Do you have your gear all ready to go? To... I do. I, I have a smart telescope that will be monitoring. My original plan actually was to get up really early in the morning, drive down to the central part. For me, the closest path where you can see uh, on the map there is uh, central Arkansas. I already had mm -hmm. a place picked out. Basically, I had my little corner of a Walmart parking lot in Russellville, <laughs> Arkansas, picked out where I was going there for three hours video the whole thing and then basically just get back in my truck and leave if the roads yeah. were congested 
there's plenty of little back roads off of the main highways I could have gone. Mm-hmm. But it's going to be cloudy there. <laughs> it's going to be quite cloudy throughout most uh-huh. of the uh, south central part of the U.S. Where the for this thing tomorrow. So a lot of places were like set up in Texas and stuff like that. And they have suddenly have had to move now to. Yeah. Like, there's one place that went into Maine. There's a couple other places uh, you know, in, in various places. But the southern part of that track, because it'll start at the bottom of this map here, this map here. Right. And it will work its way up to the Northeast. So it'll start down in Mexico and, and go that direction. Right. And I was talking the, to uh, Eric from Media Palace and uh, he said that, yeah, they're expecting rain. So that's yeah. kind of blowing it for the whole uh, area there in Houston, you know, Dallas, that whole area there is, is going to be covered with clouds. And we have a 3%, 6% chance of some clouds, but, you know, we're still off that track there. And right. this will get pretty uh, dark where you're at. It, it should. It should still get uh, fairly dark. This is off of the NASA.gov site here. And, oh, ooh, you can make that bigger. Okay. This is actually uh, five minutes a second that I'm showing here on a time lapse of where it's going to make it a little bigger. How it's going to go across. Whoa. You barely touch this thing and it's very sensitive. It's pretty. <laughs> How it looks when it's going across. And you can see um, that's yeah, the, uh, the central of- part. It, it, it's a little it's a little misleading unless you know what's going on here. You see this giant shadow that covers the entire country there. And then there's just that little line that's in the middle. Yeah. Uh, in in the some of those earlier photos you showed, where it's got the angles coming down and it's sort of like focusing the so to speak like a like a magnifying glass kind of a thing. Same idea, except yeah. it's a shadow. And the center part where you're going to see totality, that's called the umbra. And then the outer parts where you're just getting partial, that's called the penumbra. So. Pretty much the whole country is going to experience some level of the penumbra tomorrow. So no matter where you live, it's going to seem a little darker, you know, a little past midday. (laughs) You're like, hey, what's going on? And uh, we had one in 2017 that was like this that cut across the country. And I was working at the base uh, as part of their wildlife program. And there was certainly some different bird activity. Birds were like kind of freaking out because they thought the sun was going down in the middle of the day. So they're trying to head back to wherever their nesting area is just to get there and then turn around and go back out looking for more food because then the sun pops back out. So uh, they were certainly confused. I certainly noticed that. Probably the the weirdest thing about being in the, in the eclipse is uh, even if you're not in the totality area, if you're off to the sides, like North or South of that line there is it'll get darker. Yeah. There's the uh, Umbra and Penumbra there at the top. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, it'll start getting dark. Like, you know, the sun's going down, but the sun's still overhead. So all the shadows are wrong. You're used to seeing it get dark outside, you know, at the end of the day or the beginning yeah. of the day. But all the shadows are pretty much like straight up and down versus really tilted off to one way or another for sunrise or sunset. So it's it's kind of weird to experience it like that. So <laughs> right. Um, also, uh, I, I was listening a little bit when I was uh, before I popped on. I heard you were, were talking about the old the classic pinhole camera and stuff like that. Uh, another yeah. good thing to use uh, if you don't have glasses, please don't look straight straight at the sun. I've got my little little package of uh, the little glasses here uh another one that uh, probably everyone at home has is if you use a colander if you take that outside and cast the shadow of the colander on the ground or like a piece of paper or something like that all the little holes in the colander will take the shape of whatever the <clears throat> shadow look of the sun is at that point so you'll be able to see the you know that little bite taking out of it during the eclipse. Wow, that's cool. 
I know I saw recently a video of somebody showing um, during an eclipse the leaves uh, through the leaves the of a tree. And it had a bunch of little like eclipses all over the, the floor. During, it was so crazy. During the one that we had uh, six months ago, uh, which was a an annular eclipse where the sun and the moon aren't exactly aligned. So the sun doesn't 100 percent or excuse me, the moon doesn't 100 percent cover the sun. So there's like a ring of fire of the sun. And uh, I, I probably can find something here real fast. If you want to give me a sec. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I was also going to do something real fast myself. Let me but, see. Uh, it, it'll, yeah, and that's, you know, the other one, if you have a bunch of trees outside, those little circles of light that come through all the leaves as they're shining, well, again, will take on the shape of wherever the eclipse is at that point. Uh, and you can never find anything quick when you need it. <laughs> <laughs> um, how, what was that? I don't know. It sounded like somebody coming in. But yeah, it's uh, oh, a lot yeah. of people are excited about it and and all that, but it's it, it's not 1492. We don't need to freak out like uh, you know the dragon's going to swallow the sun. Yeah. Oh gosh, if I do that, I'm going to lose that, which is okay. Okay. So. Uh, Slackmate sent me the picture of all the little oh, okay. things. There we go. So that, I wonder if I can make yeah. it larger. No, I can't because of the way I saved it. But you can see all the little circular. <laughs> yep. You can see those circular little marks there. So it's kind of, it's, it's unique. It's different going to be really it'll be cool to see other people's stuff i don't i'm not going to go out there and you know take pictures and do all that i'm i'm interested i'll look sky. at it on yeah i'll look at it through other people's lenses okay but i'm not interested yeah, in there's, doing that for there's going to be plenty of, of websites that'll be up and running uh i'll be on with uh, uh the folks over at uh Who's doing it? Anthony over on his channel is going to be doing a thing during the eclipse over at Unidentified yeah. S4. I'll be joining him over there and uh, oh, begrudgingly set up my smart telescope on the, the back porch. And it's like, eh, if I get it, I get it. And hope the clouds don't move in where <laughs> I'm at. Yeah. I mean, that's all you can do. Uh, it's all about the weather, too. Um, so for you to get your members for your charges but hold on one second I, I wanted to resell why won't it let me okay I've got I just I guess I just gifted five Sasquatch secrets memberships and they have just been rewarded Congratulations, everybody. And um, <laughs> and um, well, how many people do we have in here? 28? Why don't we do that one more time? There we go. And there's the next five. Gifted memberships, Henry May, Robert Dendoven, Brian and Chewy, JT, and Andy Broad. Um, got those ones, the first ones. Who were the first ones? I didn't you. Grasshopper, Angel Nolan, Bristol, Lester Taylor, Henry May. I think that was five, ten. Was that ten? Better be ten. Okay, got that taken care of. I wanted to... Uh, 
I'll go read the terms later. I'm probably going to have to pay for No. <laughs> <laughs> I intended to pay for those anyway. So there you go. Uh, you guys have another month of gift, gifted membership. So, oops, didn't mean to do that. So, oh, and for those of you who don't know what CERN is or who CERN is, it's actually, the name is derived from an acronym in French, okay? It's, uh, in English, it's the European Council of, like, Nuclear Research or something like that. Research Council European pour la Research Nuclear or something like that. <laughs> And it, I think it was founded like in the fifties, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, it's been around for a while. There's been, uh, been early versions of that for about that long. That sounds about right. Fifties. Uh, I never really started learning about it until, you know, the, the conspiracies come out and then you're like, Whoa, they're shooting stuff. You know, what are they doing? Where are they shooting this? Stuff? But it's just, it's a large, uh, collider in it's one of the world's largest. Is it? It's the world's yeah. largest, correct? Well, CERN is the largest. China's working on one that's a little bit bigger. There's plans for another one someplace else. Basically, what it is, it's a particle accelerator where they take two different particles. Or it's sort of ring shaped. It's got giant magnets around it, so it keeps an individual par particle right in the middle of this round tunnel, and they get it up to like near relevant relativistic speeds and slam it into another particle and when the particles disintegrate they analyze they have sensors there uh, where they collide and analyze all the pieces and parts that fly apart mm -hmm. of what make up these tiny particles so that's how they learn how like atoms are put together now it's only like one atom because the whole tunnel has, is all in a vacuum the only particle in there is the one particle and then the one, whatever the other particle is. It. So it's not going to create a nuclear explosion. It's not going to tear a wormhole in time and space. Probably. Uh, <laughs> there is a possibility for very tiny, like fractions of a sec of a microsecond uh, black holes that could happen, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was only made for before they would even, they would need computers to tell them if, if it even happened. They they would disintegrate to almost immediately. But mm -hmm. but that's well, what they're know, doing. Before starting up with that, uh, I guess they had announced that they had a stable beam um, by on this last Friday. But of course, what happened on Friday? We had earthquakes. We had earthquakes in places we normally don't have earthquakes. So that again started more crap. <laughs> you know, yep. why is New York getting earthquakes? And then I heard Vermont had an earthquake. So yep. um, there, you know, it, it sets off. People set off. Just like people are saying about the names, that there's six names that are the same, that this thing's going to be traveling right. through. And uh, it, it depends on who you are and what names you pick. Uh, they're always a biblical yeah. name. They're always having something to do with some uh, biblical catastrophe or something like that. Do you know how many right. biblical names there are of the tiniest little towns in the United States? They're everywhere. <laughs> Uh, that there's, and this thing that's going from Texas to Maine, yeah, it's probably going to, I'm surprised it's only six, uh, to be honest. So mm -hmm. I, I don't find that one uh, very good. If you like, I've pulled up what the cloud <laughs> cover will be for tomorrow, if you want to look at that. Okay. Uh, hold on. Get rid of all these things. All righty. Uh, did you send it? Oh, you're sending it now. But uh, this is from the National Weather Service. If you look at uh, our chart here at the top, the light blue is clear skies, zero percent coverage, all the way to this dark gray of a hundred percent at the top. Now uh, tomorrow morning, and th these are all in Eastern Time, at uh, eight a.m. it'll be looking like this. So we got our our path. Oops, our our path, of course, is going to start down here in Texas and stretch all the way up to Maine. But uh, 8 in the morning, not so bad. But then it starts building by 11 a.m. Eastern time. 
2 p.m. Basically between 11 and 2 p.m. is going to be your peak time, and you start seeing a lot of clouds moving in uh, mm -hmm. in that central part when it's going when it would actually happen. I was trying. I was thinking of uh, going like in this area, but it's going to be. Yeah or miss exactly where that line of clouds are because there's little thin clouds in all of this so it'll be like a partly cloudy thing for right there yeah you might get a shot at a clear shot at it you might not i'm not going to drive six hours to get down there to see that so and my area is <laughs> going to get totally sucked in by by that area because i'm up in this part of kansas so oh, i see but you know when you start getting down into this part of Texas, because that's where you've got Dallas and all that stuff in there. So I'm not going to drive around that. That's going to be a madhouse. Oh tomorrow. yeah, for sure. So, it's basically all of this tomorrow. Let me pull up the other map. Here's our uh, other map here for, for tomorrow, the path it'll take. Once uh, you start getting, like, we'll just pick Dallas out of the, the group here. 1223 is when the sun will first start covering, or excuse me, the moon will first start covering the sun. At 1.40 p.m. local time there in Dallas Central Time is when it'll be totality for three minutes and 51 seconds. It'll start moving off at 1.44 by 2.17, it'll be about halfway off. By 3.02 p.m. there in Dallas, it'll be completely done. And probably when it starts getting over about that halfway point where it's halfway off, people are going to start jumping in their cars and hitting the road. Okay, kids, we saw it. Let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> and the roads are going to be psychotic. And that's right. the other part that is added to a lot of the the – hand wringing delirium with a lot of people is that a lot of places rightfully slow have declared this like a natural disaster style thing where they're a lot of these like really small towns just don't have the infrastructure for dealing with traffic jams and stuff like that. So some places they've organized uh, th those guys to be pre-positioned to basically keep traffic moving. Keep it moving. <laughs> and that's what stirred more stuff. Again, you know, people panic. Why are they sending, you know, the reserves and what the National Guard out there? And why are they doing this and that? And um, I even hear that they did the same thing with grocery stores. They've wiped out water supplies and, and foods and stuff like that. So it's just madness. It's the madness. I, I do have I to admit it my gas tanks with gas and i went and filled up all my water bottles <laughs> my large uh, gallon for my machine for so. me what i was planning on doing if it was if it was going to be 100 percent clear here in uh, uh arkansas i was planning on driving about five and a half hours to russellville arkansas which is kind of uh -huh. it's a small place it's wet northwest of little rock and there's not any, I mean, Oklahoma City, but there's plenty of other, by the time I'm, I was more concerned about the trip back of roads being clogged and all that, there's yeah. plenty of smaller access road where once you get up, once you start getting away from that center, yeah, uh, because there's not a lot of like direct line traffic. You either, if you're like where I was planning on being Russellville to stick to the main highways, you're either going to go through Little Rock, which is, that's where most of the traffic is going to come from. Uh, nobody's hanging out in Oklahoma City, so that's going to be clear all the way to there if you can get a jump on. Yeah. And uh, it's, you know, I, I could certainly, you know, just go, there's a lot of smaller surface type roads where go up to Springfield, Missouri, and then just skip home that way. Once you're out away from the area, it'll be a lot better. And I don't think it'll be, I think there'll be some congestion right at the very end mm -hmm. of the thing because everybody's wanting to get out of there all at the same time. <laughs> uh, You're going to be like, that was it? <laughs> Yeah, I don't right. know. Okay. I, would tell I do, you know, I'm like, that's it. Okay, that was that looked, was here in Russellville, Arkansas, like right here, right off the highway. There's a couple of like, you know, little chain that you know, like uh, Motel Six and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. $400 a night for during the eclipse. <laughs> oh, I was like, yeah, yeah. this is a, little, a small place out in the middle of nowhere. 
yeah, I can get a ho- Oh no, I'm not for $400 uh for that one night. No way. Yeah. Dang, yeah, that's price gouging right there for you. Uh the American way. <laughs> Charge that's it. more. Charge more because that's the only day you're going to be able to do it for. So anyway, um yeah, that so that's what's happening tomorrow, guys. And let's get into the part about the animals. So, um, you know, like as I mentioned earlier, I was working on the base. This is the path from the 2017 solar eclipse. Mm, yeah, right. Cut right through the middle of the country. I was down here uh, around Wichita area. And my observation was mostly the birds, uh, where because eclipses happen, happen in the middle of the day, sometime between noon and 3 p.m. And uh, it was about one. Uh, and where I was, uh, was like in the 80 ish percentile thing. I'm going to be the same thing for tomorrow. I think it's going to be 88% where I'm going to be for, for tomorrow. And it was mostly birds. I did see you know, as it was starting to get fairly dark, uh, birds started moving up from their area, which that was part of my job then was to monitor bird traffic so that they wouldn't fly in front of planes. Uh, yeah. they did restrict flying for like an hour before, hour after. Because they didn't want people, this, the same thing, like they're closing major sections of interstates tomorrow because they don't want dorks driving down the road and trying to look up into the sky while they're driving. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. <laughs> it seems extreme, but you have to do that, right? Because there are people who yeah. are not, don't have all the marvels, you know, and... Yeah, they got their shades yeah. up. They're like, I got the right stuff I picked up. Let's go. I'll just drive with them on. I'll be okay. I can't see. <laughs> oh, I don't know how you can see out of those anyway. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, certain birds are, I think, going to be the ones that are mostly affected by this. Uh, there will be, uh, I don't know how far we are into it, but like I know it's mostly on the eastern part of the country. This is supposed to be a record year for cicadas. So you may hear yeah, a lot of screaming. Two different, two different uh, um, what do you call cycles? The two different, yep. the 15 oh, year oh, and the 17 year or something like that. That's or another reason to panic. Uh, that oh, never happens. Uh, <laughs> people will panic at anything. It, it just doesn't matter, you know? But they've always had bad cicadas, as far as I know. I yeah. mean, they're you see fun. every year you see people posting all that stuff of um, their homes just covered in cicadas and bugs or whatever. Ugh. So uh, we don't have to worry about that. Uh, Southwest. East, East, East Coast for tomorrow for, uh, let's see. I don't know. Their path for that. Uh, get rid of that. I think they'll be okay. Because it'll still be. I would think it would be more along through here. But uh, who knows? But you do. That's the other part of it. Is uh, once the birds, you know, they see that they think the sun, the sun is going down, they're going to go back to their wherever their nest is, their roost area yeah. is. Uh, insects, and frogs, everything that has a night cycle uh, is going to start thinking, "Hey, it's time to time yes. to wake up." And and that's what you know um, they're saying, and the scientists say that it's natural. That's a natural occurrence for animals when it gets dark to want to seek refuge for the night because they are thrown off and they think it's just time to do that part of their routine. It's getting colder. They need to huddle up into their nests and to wherever they're going. And it'll be, it's a little bit of confusion, but it, it's not a very long time, you know, by the time that they are starting to do that, it, it, everything should pop back to normal. And, Even uh, like, like in that Russellville thing, uh, I'll just click on that for the example. That's in the middle of all of it, and it's taken time to think about it. Four minutes and 12 seconds in <laughs> totality where yeah, you know, it'll, it'll look like that, <laughs> where you'll be yeah. able to see... Uh, yeah. you know what the the sun's uh, outer atmosphere will look like, and everything else. It's uh, Corona, but right, right. Uh, you know, it's for that four minutes. They're thinking it's night. 
it's nighttime. It's time to yeah. do whatever it is they do at night. So, uh, according to a professor of physics and astronomy at the University of Texas, San Antonio, um, she stated that once it gets to about the 75% or 80% eclipsed, uh, there's enough sunlight missing that the animals will start to react. That's usually the point that they start seeing things uh, happen. And about 20 minutes from totality, birds will start to flock. Some will quiet down. Farm animals like cows, chickens, they tend to want to walk back to the barn for the night. And because they, they think it's nighttime, they think it's time to go to bed. And those are recorded things that have happened in the past. But previous research has shown that bees stop buzzing during totality and return to their hives. Then when sunlight reappears, the bees seem disoriented. And according to a paper published in the Entomology Society of America page uh, in 27, uh, out of the 2017 eclipse, they, they recorded that. You, you mentioned uh, 75, 80% I've got on this chart here. These orange lines closest to that totality thing are the 75% coverage. So that's a very large area where for a few minutes, it's going to be, you know, three quarters dark. And uh, yeah. that's where the, that's the biggest effect. Like you were just reading about that. Uh, mm -hmm. All of these animals are going to be like, whoop, sun's going down. Nighttime. Yeah. I'm gonna go to bed. Yeah. They're going to notice day. it. Uh, she also stated that this transition out of out of it's probably something that they're not expecting. So it could be a period of confusion. And another professor at South Illinois University School of Forestry and Horticulture said that it's hard to exactly say what these individuals or animals are experiencing because we haven't studied it enough because it doesn't happen that often. So in the same way as animals are going to be affected, well, plants are affected too. And there are many plants that I guess get affected uh, during this and uh, University of Missouri at Columbia during the 2017 eclipse found that some plants closed up during the totality and others followed the sun as the moon moved over it. So uh, let's see what else dating way back as far as the 1500s researchers can expect breeding animals to quiet down during the eclipse. And it's just a defense mechanism that, uh, to avoid detection from predators during dark periods. They just think it's bedtime. Bedtime yeah. for bed. Oh. Uh, another, another one is crepuscular nocturnal insects, which is crickets. Animals like crickets. They begin to vocalize as the light dissipates because crickets respond very quickly to changes in light sources. Um, we've got spiders will begin to engage in web building and web maintenance during this time, which is typically a nighttime behavior. Um, in, in a study, in 2020, the Galapagos tortoise, typically slow and lethargic species, were observed to get the urge to mate during the 2017 eclipse. Interesting. Mm. It was time to get it on. <laughs> you have that. It's get it on. I need that one. I don't have that clip. Um. This little uh, picture I've pulled up here shows some uh, future eclipses. Here's here's that 2017 we were talking about. This one right here is our one for tomorrow, April 8th. 
The next one, technically in 20 years, in 20 August 2044, starts here in Dakotas and swoops up there. But if you wait another year, August of 2045, that one cuts right across the whole thing. Mm. So stay healthy for 2045. 2045? Ish. <laughs> oh. Anyway. Uh... Who is this? Oh, uh, Jonathan says it's really cool. I experienced one back when I lived in Brant Lake, New York, around 1992 or 94, if I remember correctly. My son was about three, so maybe 95. Everything looked ultraviolet purple and dark. Yep. The uh, the colors don't look the same. I mean, it's, it's the same effect as when the sun goes down or the sun comes up. You don't have the full 100% light on everything, so... Everything's all in shadows and all that. But now the shadows are like straight up and down instead of being stretched from the horizon. That's 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 the thing that really blew me away. It's like, wow, this is like really weird. But uh, for people that are actually in that uh, central totality zone, there's another thing that's uh, referred to as it's they call it a couple of different things, but it's like called solar snakes where just like a few seconds. It's literally only like four or five seconds long, right? The the last few seconds of uh, when the moon pushes over in front of the sun, those last little bits of light, uh, because there's mountains and stuff like that on the moon, as it's covering it up, it's not the, the very last few seconds of light before it's totally covered. Uh, it's sporadic little spotlights of the sun coming oh, wow. through. And it gives mm -hmm. this kind of rippling effect on the ground. If you have like a large, like a lighter colored area uh -huh. where you can pick out the shadows being slightly different, where it looks like the shadows are moving around like snakes on the ground. Wow. For only a few seconds. Um, Bigfoot in tune as we should. So... Okay, let's see. What else? What else? What other animals? We've got, we talked about that. Um, I guess we could talk about the soundscape. I'm going to take this down for a second. Don't get rid of it because I might bring it back up. Okay. Um, so this is where I'm getting the information from that I'm telling you right now about these animals. I've got all these links down in the description. If you guys want to go check them out for yourself, but um, in Southern Illinois, the scientists were studying insects and birds and the reason based on soundscapes made during the eclipse. Now the project, there's a project called uh, eclipse soundscapes project which is a uh, NASA funded research for this eclipse that uh, happens during the eclipse. And it's a, I should just bring that up and move on. Let me move these over. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see. Eclipse. Here we go. So, da, da, da. Oh, it's this one. So here we go. It says that um, this uh, Southern Indian University professor leads a sci uh, citizen science project to listen to nature during the eclipse. So Brent Pease, an assistant professor in the forestry program at Southern Illinois University Carbondale, works with Rebecca Duque, a graduate research assistant, to hang a nature listening device. Pease is patterning, uh, oh, sorry, partnering with the Eclipse Soundscapes Project, a citizen science effort using volunteers to strategically place 100 sound recording instruments around the area to listen in on nature before, during, and after the total eclipse tomorrow. So, um, 
The project, its aim is to help scientists understand how animals and insects react to the sudden loss of light, which might also expand their understanding of animal sensory systems. The project will serve as a model for using multi-sensory scientific observation and data collection techniques in which observers are asked to use all senses available to them. Uh, so the overall uh, eclipse effort will involve 400 recording devices. And they all run off of uh, AAA batteries. They have an onboard computer that stores sound recordings and, through, you know, your SD cards. And the researchers plan the recorders to collect sound files 24 hours a day for five days straight, beginning two days before the eclipse and then through to the last uh, end of it. The first two days of recording will serve as a baseline with the total eclipse being the action. And the following two days of recording will be used as a marker for return to normalcy. I hmm. thought that was kind of cool. It's pretty interesting. I, I'd like to hear what they find yeah. from that. Maybe they'll find Sasquatch. <laughs> <laughs> Just hear a deep, gravelly voice. What the fuck is going on? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what happened to the sun? Oh, man. Yeah, uh, uh... I don't know. We'll see what happens there. I wonder, let's see. They want to know if the crit crickets are going to start going, when they start, when they stop. They're going to start recording all of that. So oh, that's good. I thought that was a pretty interesting research that it'll be interesting to see what their findings are. I know I'll probably be checking it out. Um, I wonder if they're doing it all in one place or do they have them scattered over like many miles? It's like as the shadow moves across and it gets a little darker. Okay. These did, and it goes a little further North. Okay. Now these started up and blah, blah, blah. Uh, I think I read where they weren't disclosing the area that they're oh. going to do it in. I think that's a control point thing. <laughs> you know, they don't want a bunch of. Um, well, nosy. where the, the main yeah, where where the main path is, I could. There's plenty of empty areas uh, out away from right. right onlookers. So, um, I'm trying to see. I'm pretty sure I read that the it was a non-disclosed area. Oh, but that this is the the ABC News article is the one. Where is it? Nope. I don't know. I guess I didn't put a picture of that one up. Um, is where I had come up with that 350 years before a total eclipse passes through southern, oh, through southern Illinois again. That's what the point was, through that particular uh, place, which could be said for a lot. There's going to be eclipses, but who knows if it's going to take, you know, it won't right. take this exact path again because, you know, we're moving around. So that was the whole point of that uh, Yeah, actually, uh, strangely enough, the very spot I was looking to observe tomorrow's down in central uh, uh, Arkansas for that 2045 date, it will pass directly over that. So if I just want to camp out there for 21 years, I'll have a good spot. Hmm. Interesting. Um, so... Let me look at this one, what this one says before I move on again. Uh, one more time. Fireflies. What is this saying about fireflies? During the August 21st, 2017 eclipse, there were 10 from Missouri to North Carolina of fireflies from the species flashing their lights when the eclipse reached totality. Uh, reaction, the light is a signal to attract potential mates. So it set off a mating between fireflies. We talked about the spiders. Uh, we talked about 
The birds, the birds, more birds. Uh, black vultures, we're seeing roosting. Uh, contribute to, we covered a lot of that in that other article. Okay, I just want to make sure I didn't miss any, any of the ones here. So, I mean, there's going to be a lot of animals that are affected and do their own thing, but it all has to do with their uh, set off nocturnal instincts to go to bed, to hide, to do whatever their normal thing is during that time. And they're going to be a little confused, but things are going to go right back to normal, to the normal pace very fast. You know, there may be an instant of confusion for some of them, but it, it, they're going to get over it. They have, you know, before. Okay, let's say that odd. I just checked the October 24th, 1995 eclipse, and it says it hit over Southern Asia. Myself and my paint crew all experienced it, wondering what was going on. Bob Olson said eclipse. Well, it could have been a lunar eclipse or an annular eclipse. I don't know which one. Hmm. All right. Could have been a partial eclipse, too. Yeah. Firefly quickies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Firefly quickies. Got to get it in uh, while it's dark, apparently. Uh, something else to... Uh, Keep it on if, if if you were done with this part. Sorry, if you had more. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, if you want to switch back over to my view. Oh, sure. Uh, one of one of the one of the things that people talk about is uh, if you happen to be in one of those totality zones, and when you know the the moon has totally covered up the sun, uh, if you look, you'll be able to the one side you'll see be able to see Venus very brightly. A little further back, you'll see Jupiter. And where this red mark is, is where uh, that comet is that may be visible. The, uh, what is it, 40 pans or whatever it's called, uh, uh, <laughs> comet. The uh, Comet 12P Ponds Brooks, excuse me. Yikes. Which, Who named that? They're fired. <laughs> it's a uh, periodic comet it swings about you know into the inner solar system about every 70 ish years sort of like um, Halley's comet same idea and uh until it gets really close to the sun they don't really know how big of a tail it'll get and then when it swings back around the sun that's when we'll be able to see if it's got like a really big tail on it so scientists are very excited to take a look at it during this because they'll be able to look directly at it because it's obviously on our, our sun's side facing thing at this point heading towards the sun. So mm -hmm. it's uh, got a really big tail. A lot of people will be very excited to see that. So, Wow. Well, the sun has been doing all these weird solar flare activities that have gotten people crazed and, you know, which is sets off the Aurora Borealis and is bringing that lower into our realm, onto the States you know, the mm -hmm. people in uh, the northern states are being able to see it better. So, the end of days. They're saying the end of days. <laughs> uh, well, we're, we are in an, in an active time for the, the sun's cycle. About every 8 to 12 years, for a few years, it just goes bananas. And that's right now. We're... Uh, we're like on the, the three quarter mark for it. We've probably got another year uh, of it acting really oh. bananas and then it'll calm mm -hmm. back down for another 10 to 12 oh, wow. months. So. Well, that's good to know. See, we need Enzo's out there to tell us this. So we're not all freaked out about that. Um, to be fair though, it has been extremely active, way more active than has been for, I mean, they've only been monitoring it for like a hundred years. Uh, but uh it's it's yeah. the most active they've ever seen the uh, the sun this time just a lot of solar flares pointing going off yeah. in all directions all all over the place. Well, it freaks and everybody it, out because when we lose signal on our cell phones and we lose yep. whatever, you know, we're like ah, you know. 
<laughs> yeah, shortwave radio is heavily affected by it. Uh, satellite signals can be affected by it. Uh, when it's more of a direct hit, so to speak, uh, when it's directly aimed at the Earth, then uh, you can have issues with, uh, you know, the Internet and your cell phone and stuff like that. Uh, it's usually pretty minor and only lasts like during that day when it's hitting kind of a thing. But because for right. the most part, these charged particles uh, get belched out by the sun and the Earth has this uh, magnetic field. We all remember the our high school science class where you take the little bar magnet and put the piece of paper on it and put little iron filings on it and it forms the little kind of like circles, those lines of force that join the, the north and south pole of the magnet. Well, our Earth is yeah. doing the same thing because the center of the Earth is a molten core of spinning iron, which makes a giant uh, uh, magnetic shield, so to speak for us and these charged particles when they hit that they'll either go to the north pole or to the south pole and uh because there's such a, a large amount of it that got belched out from the sun uh it'll swing around to the two poles of the earth and it interacts with uh, uh particles in the upper very upper part of the atmosphere like a couple hundred miles up and uh that's where you start seeing those crazy uh, northern lights and and southern lights the the australia's borealis it happens down there too uh to see yeah. that but you got to be fairly close to the poles to see them all the time like alaska and iceland uh, uh that's where i've seen them a lot in the past and and they are amazing uh when you're especially when you're that far north and it's pretty much fills up most of the sky and it's uh, you see a lot of like time lapse stuff where it's moving like really fast. It doesn't move that fast, but it does move very slowly and mm -hmm. it almost kind of looks like it's alive, like some kind of underwater creature or something like that. And it's taking up the entire sky. And you're like, I am a minuscule speck in the universe looking at this <laughs> thing moving over your, your entire head. But uh, wow. it is pretty, pretty great. And uh, I highly encourage mm -hmm. everybody to, at some point in their lives, uh, venture far enough north to check that out. There's, a, there's Alaskan yeah. cruises and stuff like that, and trips to Iceland and Finland and places like that. Yeah. Uh, you can certainly chart specifically for that reason to, to look for the northern lights. Oh, wow. Um, one of the things that was also being talked about is how the eclipse could also cause air travel delays. Um, yep, uh, for kind of the same reason uh, is uh, even if you're no matter who you are, they're like, Oh, there's an eclipse going on. <laughs> you're gonna do one of these numbers, and uh, everybody wants to take a look, you know. <laughs> um, so eclipses aren't just the scientific part of it, but it has been part of our history, a part of uh, mythology as well. And I'm going to do a flip again. So in the Native American culture, there has been a number of, you see it in their artwork, you hear the stories, and I'm not going to go through all those stories. That's a whole different uh show okay because there's a lot of information about um that the historical part and the myths and the legends of in the native american uh culture and um even uh this oil painting right here of a solar eclipse this is located in the u.s customs house in philadelphia pennsylvania so we've recorded these things happening for a very long time. This picture was in 1938. Um, I found an article uh, titled The Eclipse, which was for in 1889 out of the National Tribune in Washington, DC, and uh, explaining to people what was happening, you know, so it would exactly not cause a panic. <laughs> and, uh, and it, and had that simple drawing. This is what's happening. You know, don't look at the lights, use a telescope or use whatever, you know, your, the filters, even back then they knew, yep. you know, 
to set the the story straight. For for back in those days, they used uh, smoked glass. They take glass and hold it over the smoky part of a fire until it was almost totally black, and basically hold up this broken, usually a broken piece of glass, and uh, so they could look directly at it. Right. And so there's many, many stories. I've got this article. I'm pretty sure I put it in, in uh, the description. It's called Solar Eclipse, A Moment of Awe, Wonder, and Belief. And uh, you can read. It's a, it's a pretty good article. I'm not going to go into, like I said, all of it. Because it, it'll talk about the Cherokee. It talks about... Um, the Choctaw and how, what their beliefs are. And the, where was the other one? Uh, the Navajo, you know, they have a similar myth seeing that interaction of the sun and moon was a sacred moment that is not for people to observe. Uh, in their mythology, the sun is male and the moon is female. And when they're together, you don't watch. <laughs> So that you know, it had all kinds of stuff like that, and it, it's actually a pretty uh, interesting article in itself. Um, it even had Hindu mythology, and it, there's a lot out there. You know, there's a lot of information about these type of uh, things when they happen. When they happen, so I encourage anybody if you're interested in that type of history you know uh go check that article out it was um who posted it this is posted by stephanie hall back in 2017 so i think that came out right around the time for the last eclipse and um uh but there's all kinds of history and artwork of people freaking out because of the eclipse and <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> and all this stuff. That's a little bit uh, kind of blurry, but uh, it's because it was a little bitty picture that I I blew up. Everybody's free. Even the dogs looking up at it. <laughs> yeah, everybody's freaking out. And Don't it's freak also out. <laughs> it's important to also I think to point out that uh, people have been tracking these kind of things for hundreds and hundreds of years. It's a uh, uh, not to say you know a thousand years ago is necessarily ancient, but uh, mankind has been plotting the stars and looking at the skies, you know, the entire existence of mankind. Depending on you know, that's a whole other discussion of how far back that goes. But uh, certainly within recent recorded history, you know, there's the famous story of uh, Christopher Columbus knowing there was a lunar eclipse coming up to uh, kind of hassle the, the local inhabitants of, I think it was Jamaica, to uh, do some work for them, which they didn't want to do, because as we found out, Christopher Columbus was kind of a jerk. And uh, he's like, well, if you don't do this, I'm going to burn up the moon tonight, which, uh, <laughs> of course, the, the lunar eclipse started. And a lunar eclipse, of course, is when the, the, the moon goes into the shadow of the earth and it turns a very dark, dark red, very similar to this picture. And uh, so, of course, the local inhabitants freaked out. It's like, man, this, this crazy European just uh, burned our moon. We better do what he says. Mm. And, yeah. Uh, right. it's, a, it's a very famous story, which uh, Mark Twain kind of uh, rewrote or repurposed it for his uh, famous story, a Connecticut, Ar a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court, where uh, an 1800s era guy finds himself in Camelot kind of a thing by mistake uh -huh. for whatever reason. And he had an astronomical book, which he knew there was a, a solar eclipse coming up that was, you know, from that time period that he got out yeah. of trouble. They are going to burn him at the stake kind of thing. The same spiel. <laughs> oh, yeah. That makes a good movie. <laughs> yeah. Bing Crosby in the film version. Very good show. Was it really? I was trying to. Yeah. Oh, it was. Oh, um, so let's circle back. And now I, I'd like to know what you guys think in the chat is, so would there be anything specific a Sasquatch would do? Would it 
I'm sure it would be confusing. I'm sure they would probably do the same thing as the other animals. And that would be to, you know, seek refuge for the night. And probably a little confusion when all of a sudden, 20 minutes later, it's light again. You know, what yeah. uh, What uh, do you guys think in the chat? Would there be anything special? Maybe poop, Nikki? They might poop. Yes, they might. Could be. Else. Maybe they go it, find some uh, special mushrooms in the forest. I don't know, you know. <laughs> or maybe they do like uh, my um, promo, and that is to worship the god <laughs> above. I don't know, you know. It we we don't I'm know. Sure some I'm sure somewhere in the past, some ancient cultures uh, uh, would, I think it was China, actually, that during a, a, an eclipse like this, that everybody would go outside and start banging on their pots and pans to scare away the dragon that's eating the sun kind of a thing. Uh, mm. That's a similar story like that uh, okay. is kind of all over the globe uh, back in the ancient days. But uh, it must have worked because we still have it there. So they scared it off. Now, um, as far as Sasquatch, uh, I I agree with you. I, I do believe that uh, that uh, there would be that initial confusion. Why is it getting dark? It's it's not cloudy. It's not a storm moving in. What's mm -hmm. happening? You know, and uh, as we said, you know, like birds move out of the larger areas to, you know, look for food and stuff like that in different areas every day, but never that far away from the nest. You know, or wherever their you know brood grounds are, right? Got to head back before it gets dark, so we can still see. But uh, yeah, Sasquatch. I I think there would be some uh, some confusion at first because it's not like this happens all the time, as we've pointed out. It's going to be twenty uh, one years till another one runs across the middle of the U.S. Anyways, so yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that's exactly what's going to happen. If they are there, it's just something weird, then it's going to trigger them to react like a regular darkness, you know. And now, if you're looking at it through a more spiritual or paranormal, then you've got people on that other side saying, oh, they'll just go to another dimension for a little while. You know, I don't know if that's yeah. what's being said or not, but it makes sense that they would say that or just disappear, you know, for whatever reason, you know, until it's back. Um, uh, Grasshopper, that that's interesting. If you can send me the link, we can look at it now when I move to uh, show me what you got, because I really don't have much on show me what you got. It was a bunch of nothing out there this week. Um, so if you want to, if it's something that we can look at, then send that to me in, um, messenger and we can look at that. Uh, B Lynn says, in my honest opinion, being that Sasquatch are thought to be so intelligent, they probably do nothing, but enjoy it and tell the young Sasquatch not to look at the sun directly. Yeah, see, that's the thing. Do they know not to look at that? Are they going to look at it and maybe their eyes don't respond the way ours do? I don't know. And to be fair, uh, if uh, there was an older one that's been around for a little while, they've seen this before. We have we just had mm -hmm. one six months ago. There was uh, one in 2017. And there was another one back in late 80s, whatever that one was. So this may be something that they're aware just happens every once in a while. Yes, there are about two eclipses every year, um, but they don't happen in the same spot. That right. that was the point from before that I, I didn't follow through with, is that they just don't happen in the same spot because they're moving locations. I think that was, uh, when you were referencing it earlier, that was more of like, this happens with regularity. There's not 
This one isn't yeah, so yeah. special that, you know, wormholes are going to open up and monsters are going to come out <laughs> or anything like that. Uh, um, no, Donald, I don't want to see your fight card. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, it would be cool to see if eclipses affect the ocean tides. Mm, no. Probably not, right? It's still there. Yeah. The yeah, it's the moon. The, the moon, still the the moon's not the, <laughs> the the moon isn't any closer or further away than it normally is. It just happens to be passing between you know the Earth and the Sun, which doesn't happen that often. I mean, it happens a couple of times a year, but uh, it doesn't affect tides or anything like that. It doesn't doesn't cause earthquakes. That's the other thing uh, from the other day. It's like. Bruh! That must be we're going to have a giant earthquake. The the new Madrid, the old what is it the new Madrid fault or whatever it is uh, that in the middle of the country is going to bust the country in half. No, no, probably not. And Jay's but, having an eclipse of the hairline. <laughs> yeah, I suffer from that uh, eclipse myself. Oh, <laughs> uh, thought it's all about. I thought what? I thought it's about. Bigfoot. What? I don't understand. <laughs> Is that a question? Statement? Oh, well, you have to explain the eclipse, right? Because we don't know what a Sasquatch would do. And that's where we're ending up the questioning. Is that what would he do? Before you can know that, you have to know what animals do. So we just discussed all the animals and what they do. What, the, what we know scientifically what they do and to know that you needed to know what a eclipse is and what type of eclipse we're going to be going through tomorrow and those uh safety factors and where it's going and all of that so we when i went right in line with how to explain all of this um because we don't know we don't know what sasquatch does none of us do it's all speculation and fun pretty much fun to to do that to say, do they teach their young that these things happen? Is it mean nothing to them? They just go on normal. That doesn't even phase them. We don't know. <laughs> so, but it's fun to talk about it. And that's why we're here, just to have some fun and talk about uh, what's going on. I think they would be well aware of it for the same reason that we talked about all the, the animal and insect uh, right. reactions to it. They would notice that too. They're, they're out in it. They're going to see that too. Yeah. Uh, does anyone expect any Bigfoot sightings during the eclipse? Well, unless you're out there in the middle of the day for 20 minutes looking for Bigfoot, <laughs> the, I think the odds are really, really small because it's not happening in the evening. But you wouldn't see it if it was in the evening. So that's a really odd question, too. <laughs> that's kind of an odd question. It, well, so I if, guess if you're outside somebody looking outside. at the eclipse, the eclipse is up there and Bigfoot would be down here. So it, it, wow. unless you heard like the brush moving and you looked over and they're, they're looking up too. <laughs> if there is a mass sighting during the eclipse, I think that would be a very weird thing. <laughs> How cool would, would it be for, it. I, for somebody? For, how cool would it be? Somebody's just like driving like some backwoods trail somewhere, and they round a corner, and there's like a whole family of looking up at the sun too, just like everybody else. <laughs> oh, let's see. So let's see. Yeah. Uh, any other questions about the Sasquatch and the eclipse? Any questions about the eclipse? We can find the answers. We've got Google. That's right. <laughs> Google knows all. I'm telling you, Bigfoot is secretly a society of big, hairy scientists that will be studying the eclipses too. They're, they're <laughs> studying our reaction to it. <laughs> Every, we're studying the animals. The so Bigfoot are studying yeah. us. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Well, we'll move right along then. It is 6.30, so let's, uh, oops, I have to find, uh, 
where I left off from before. We are Thank you for this. having this slide in there. That's very, very important. Uh, I heard you talking about that earlier. Uh, also, oh. welding goggles, not good enough. Don't use welding goggles. Yeah, yeah. You, they have specific filters built into these that are sp specific just for that, for looking at the sun, okay? You're dark. Like I said, dark ray bands, they aren't going to cut it. They don't do that type of filtering. So do not look up at the sun, please. Just watch it on the news later. <laughs> Go to YouTube. There's going to be a million of yeah. uh, videos out. I'll be covering it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's what I suggest everybody do. But um, I'm say. Uh, it is time for show me what you got, but I don't have the. Show me what here. you got. Kim, you heard the said. Show me what you got. So it was a slow week out there on social media. It was a bunch of the same stuff that we normally do, but I was just not in the mood for all the BS. But they all look like this, showing pictures like this, saying that there's Sasquatch there and there's nothing there, okay? So uh, it's, it's kind of discouraging. But, mm -hmm. and the same thing, <laughs> Yeah, maybe those can help you see something in those. Um, what'd you say there, B. Lynn? Those religious folk spreading fear are the opposite of what a religious person is. No one knows the day or hour or second of coming of Christ. You're right. True. It is. It's just a lot of fear. You know, and that gets spurred on with this new generation that were born on social media. and. They're content creators. Okay, remember that. They they need the content so they will say and do anything that can't that you can't prove or disprove because it's just their opinion. So um, it's okay for them to do that. They do that. Um, so There's just beware. The headline that always gets me: NASA in a panic over upcoming eclipse because of weather <laughs> is like eight paragraphs <laughs> down. You know just. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You have to read the articles. Don't just read the headlines, okay? Because those are made specifically to grab your attention, which is what they do. But then you don't finish reading. You have to. Mm -hmm. I, I print out all of the articles on purpose so that I sit there and I read them, you know, and get the actual information. And then you're like, oh, it was a big nothing burger. You know, that article, article was nothing. <laughs> And sadly, that's just the way it is because that's the society we're in. Uh, they're in for the actual click to go onto the show and to read that article. And they're just trying to get you to hang on for 15 seconds, 30 seconds and move on. So anyway, yeah, just be wary of that. And, and that's all I put. I think that's all I had on show me because, um, Oh, there's another one. Wait, what is this one? Nope, that was it. Where, just where that is one. This from? Uh, I don't know. It's just a rando picture somebody put. They okay. had no information on it, no nothing, just in a Facebook group. There, um, there was some names, but the name on there is so tiny, and it says J A. I don't know who that is. So this is somebody's. But there, I didn't see any background information. But that's because people grab it and then they take it to another group and another right. group and another, you know. Copy and before you know, it, you've yeah. lost where it really came from. That happens yeah. a lot. Um, goes on, but with knowledge. Yep, you just try to get out all the sides of the story, you know, cause there's a bunch of different sides. Nikki, I can send garbage like that. Yeah. It, it, to me, it's, it's not anything. Why show that, you know, don't even show that <clears throat> it's not worth it. Even couldn't even be bothered to put their, the red circles and the outlines on. 
I know. <laughs> I could probably do it and circle about a dozen different little eyeballs yeah. and looking at me out through that. Yeah, I, I left my pareidolia in the other room on the charger, so I, I don't really see <laughs> either. J clips just don't want under the J clips. Um, the J clips trackway. Funny, that's funny. Uh, oh, somebody sent me a message. Oh, okay, one moment and. Let me see what this is about here. This is a 30 second. Oh no, it's not a 30 second. That's the commercial. Hold on. Oh, it's a two minute. This is um, something from the Ohio Bigfoot Hunter, Tim Stover. I guess uh, the Creek Bottoms Mystery, April of 2024. So I guess he caught something very interesting. And so to total credit to Ohio Bigfoot Hunter, the Creek Bottoms Mystery, April 2024. Uh, oops, I guess I got to link it first, huh? I'm going to go back over here. And I've not listened to this, so I am going to, it is going to be muted because I don't know if there's music on this or what what is on here. And we are watching this uh, raw to see what is going on. So let's watch the Ohio Bigfoot Hunter. Tim Stover, type of area wildlife preserve, creek bottoms, location somewhere in Ohio, no hiking trails, no buildings, no farms, no houses, no parking lots, approximately distance to subject 350 to 400 yards. This video has been stabilized. I see one, two, one major one, and then I saw something to the right. It did appear to be walking. Did you guys see that? Yeah. Yeah. That did not look like a deer. It didn't look like a bear. Uh, did I see swinging arms? Um... I have heard that Tim Stover is uh, a trustworthy guy. So, um, there's certainly something moving around down there. There is something moving. I'll go back to that one moment in a bit. Let's just take a look at the whole thing. So, once again, this is video from Tim Stover in the Ohio. What was it? The Ohio Bottom. Ohio. Oops. Ohio Bigfoot Hunter. Which you can go over there and go hit that uh, subscribe button. So this is the same angle in daytime, so we can see what he was. Line of what he was looking at. Okay. I'm sure he's probably talking through this, but I don't want to steal his content. Um, go watch, go watch this yourself from his channel at the Hawaii Bigfoot. 
Hmm. Um, Ohio what? Bigfoot Hunter. I'm going to hit that subscribe button for him. And uh, I have to wait for this commercial. Let's come over here. And that looks like a head. It does look like a head. We don't know. We don't know what that is. But yeah, I see arms. I see legs. Solid white. Don't look like clothes. Because I did see something earlier this week. And the way the imager was breaking, it looked like clothes were on it. And I thought I had sent it to myself. And I guess it never went through because when I went to get it, I couldn't find it. And I don't know where it is now. So anyway, that's really interesting. What do you guys think? It's it's big from a distance. It's big from that's a pretty long way right there. So uh, it's I definitely really like the end where he showed the regular light version for the same place he was zooming. So you got a sense of perspective and scale there. I like that a lot. Yeah, yeah, which people don't do. Um interesting. It is interesting. And it it was walking fairly fast. Turn the sound on. It's I never asked permission to use it, Grasshopper. So um I I would rather not unless I had permission yeah. from him. Yeah, go over there and uh check it out go yourself. Like, no, it, like it, it's great. Like it. Yeah, go over there and watch it with the sound on and give him the credit. But um hmm. I'd be moving in. They look pretty it's fast. Really if you were out there, where, uh, obviously, he's, I would assume he's familiar with that area, or even if he's not, that video that he shot over that, you could kind of overlay and see where the trees were, and was it walking behind trees? Which ones were they doing? You could go out there yourself and do some measurements. It's like, okay, I know the the top of whatever the white thing was came up to here on this tree, and that's a foot and a half over my head. So whatever it was. was oh, oh, okay. So Grasshopper is saying that day video is the video, okay? But um, at taken at the same time, uh, it's because okay. we were watching looking at it through a flare. Okay. Huh. So that's that's pretty interesting too. So it would be cool to see the footage. Does it show the oh, footage yeah. without that? <laughs> I don't know. He, he, he was juggling the, the, the flare pretty good. I don't know if he had the second one was trying to do two at the same time, maybe, but uh, and, and there good you on go. for, doing, uh, for admitting that they did some stabilization work, which you could clearly see. So that was good. So it, it, Ohio not, Bigfoot. Hunter. Yeah, I'm going to check that out. Tim Stover from Ohio Bigfoot Hunter. The name of the video is Oh, the Creek Bottoms Mystery from seven days ago. Cool. Go uh, click that button, folks. Go over there and uh, watch that whole video for yourself. I'm merely uh, showing a clip of it, so which is part of the fair use part. Okay, that's why I can't use the video, the audio. <laughs> it's not that easy anymore once you start to get <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> before I wasn't monetized and now I'm working yeah, on that so I can't do it whole, anymore whole music libraries yeah. other ah, that's fine <laughs> yeah, can't, it wouldn't matter before but now I, you'll be surprised everything I do gets they tell you about it can't use this two seconds you can't use this <laughs> Believe me, all it's Mark. It's even coming up with hitting me with uh, stuff from Canva and I pay for Canva to use their audio stuff and it's coming up with hits on stuff I use on Canva. So it's like, it's just so it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's out of control. What has to happen is that Canva should put the licenses all 
on their music automatically. If you pay for it, then the license should be attached, but it doesn't, it's not. Crazy. Yeah. So, uh, hold on one second. I am being bothered. Oh. <laughs> Did she put the link for that in the chat? Everybody go check out. Okay. So that was good. Let me take that off. How do I take that off? Like that. Mm -hmm. uh, Tim uses an intro sound, no music. Uh, yeah, that's okay. I don't want to take his. Yeah, that's his. That's not I didn't ask him to use it. <laughs> if you're interested, go there and give him the at least the view. You know, watch it. <laughs> It's all good. It's all good. We saw it looks very interesting and I'm going to be checking all that stuff out for sure. We need good people out there looking at this stuff. Uh, I got warned for Simon and Garfunkel. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of big, big names yeah. there. but <laughs> People have heard of them. I think uh, they <laughs> would come after you. Yeah. Well, it is cool now that I'm on that next step with YouTube that now I can purchase licenses through them, which is, that's new. I haven't heard about that one. Is it expensive? N not really. Um, some are, and then some of them are, some of the music is marked where you can share the pr anything that's made off that you can share with the actual uh, creator. So half a percentage goes to them and then you keep the other percentage. It's, it's weird. It's got a lot of rules. Uh, show us what you got. So that was it. That's, um, that was show me. Let's move on to the news. So in the news, we've got state park employees issue Bigfoot warning for Silverwood Lake in April Fool's prank. So they did it again. They made a prank. Okay. They did a prank before. Remember, they posted all those uh, signs up in the, the woods saying, beware, you know, of Bigfoot in the area and stuff. Well, this is no different. Uh, no Bigfoot was sighted in the San Bernardino Mountains. California State Park pranked the public on April Fool's Day with a warning of North American Sasquatch sightings in Miller Canyon. The jest was posted on Facebook stating Sasquatches are highly endangered and extremely rare species that pose unknown risks to the public. The alleged Bigfoot sighted was sighted in Miller Canyon, located southeast on the lake on West Fork Mojave River, a tributary of Mojave River, in the San Bernardino Mountains, south of Hesperia. And due to their unknown nature, uh, it is recommended that if you encounter a Bigfoot, to quickly evacuate the area and call the Silver, Silver Lake kiosk on uh, hashtag... April Fools. So I mean, that seems kind of obvious, but I'm sure people again. Yeah, yeah. I just read the headline. They didn't read the story. They just, yeah, they don't. They don't read the whole story. They just catch what they want to catch on that. For reals. Um, next one. Outdoors. Out of the outdoors. Recent Bigfoot sighting in Washington is probably not what you. think think a recent Bigfoot sighting in Washington State, Thurston County, made the local newspaper. In February, a 31-year-old man, his young son, and a friend were riding motorcycles off-road near Grand Mound when the three-and-a-half-year-old boy pointed at the distant figure running along the ridge about a half mile away. The two adults say what the boy pointed at and uh, and it struck them as odd. 
The figure appeared tall, too tall to be human. The witness told the BFRO. The trio watched the two tall, tan, hominoid figures run for about 30 seconds before it disappeared from view. Did they spot Sasquatch? The area isn't new to Bigfoot sightings, and the BFRO Scott Taylor wrote in the report documenting the sighting, these are the routes I suspected Sasquatch use when they need to transit transit between the mountains of the Olympic Peninsula, including the Capital Forest area and the Cascade Mountains where the Mount Rainier and Mount St. Helens is located. The plot thickens. It's what happened after the sighting that makes the situation even more interesting. After news about the sighting started circulating, a local cross-country athlete came forward saying he was the supposed Sasquatch. The Chronicle report staff received an email from Gunnar Morgan, a Rochester High School student, after the original story ran. He wrote, that Sasquatch running was me. So <laughs> Yeah, so Morgan is over six feet tall and his cousin was apparently running in step and side by side along the same ridge on the same date at that time as the Bigfoot sighting. He says his GPS enabled Garmin watch can prove that he was there. I can pinpoint exactly where the motorcyclist must have spotted us and where we must have been, Morgan wrote. To the Chronicle, I stand 6'1", and from a distance, we could have been mistaken as a large creature. So there you go. That is your Bigfoot in the news <laughs> for this week. I liked that one. How it had a conclusion. It had a conclusion. Yeah. <laughs> so we are coming up, but we've got one more thing. <laughs> you see it? Do you see it? What? Get ready. Be ready. <laughs> oh. I just had to let you know that Peter Kane, the dog trainer, has been making it big on TikTok. He is not just on YouTube. He's got over 440,000 followers on TikTok. But he has been more focused lately on um, Goat Boy and mermaids, and mole people, and what else? Cryptids, other kind of cryptids, and frogmen and stuff. And he still goes on his horribly uh, crazy rants. For seven seconds, he will just sit there and yell at whoever's watching. So <laughs> it's crazy, okay? But at least on this one, I wanted to bring it up because he does put under his bio comedian so he's still doing his normal uh satiric type comedy okay and i cannot see there we go uh bye henry so as well as bigfoot master tractor Rick Dyer. He is still out there doing his thing uh, with his TikTok and he doesn't have his biggest following, 21,000 there, but putting out his material about Bigfoot and how he saw the Bigfoots, including the Georgia Bigfoot one as real again. Okay. So we already know he came onto my show and said that was all fake and we got that all proven. It was fake. But he's changing his story again. He's got his truck rewrapped again, ready to go oh, for boy. the next round. And he is still calling himself the greatest Bigfoot hunter in the world. So I will keep you guys updated on all his little shenanigans uh, as they come up. Because it's sure to something's going to be coming up. Um, something. Something will be coming up. I'm sure of it. I I I can I just I know. Lunch. <laughs> yeah, feel it in my bones. Feel it in my bones. Well, thank you so much for coming on and helping me with the discussion there, Enzo. It would have been a of 
faster show for me if I didn't have anybody <laughs> to talk to. But um, yeah, sorry to bother you at work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my once a week work, my once. But uh, thank you all for being here and uh, sharing some time with us. Hope you got a little bit of knowledge about the eclipse. And what do you think Bigfoot does? Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely like nothing. Everyone else. Yeah, yeah. But uh, congratulations to everybody who got um, uh, another membership for another 30 30- I hope to have uh, at least two uh, member-only videos, chats coming up. And pretty soon, when I start going out up into the mountains, those who got the high tier, uh, the Secret Society tier, you'll be getting special videos of your own as soon as I start going out. And I'm, I'm hope- I think I want to go do that slot canyon next weekend. Seems like a... A good one it's it's in the desert so i uh, hope it doesn't rain i better look at the weather because you don't want to be in a slot canyon when it starts to rain <laughs> no, so but so that's all depending on um what's coming up with the weather so we'll see we'll see what's happening and again enzo thanks you got anything coming up uh, I don't recall the exact time, but I know uh, when I identified S4, uh, me and a couple of the boys will be talking about the eclipse during the day tomorrow uh, as that's going on, making some commentary about that. That'll be fun. Yeah, I'll be watching. I'll watch that. I shall watch that for sure. So everybody else out there, it's about time for you to go over to Steve Coles and see what's going on. I think he's doing a show tonight, isn't he? Is he doing a show tonight? Well, if he is, you guys better get over there. That's Squatch DTV next, right after this. You guys, thank you for being here. Please hit that like button before you leave. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you want me to talk about next. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next chat.